and peace, these are the gifts that are yours from God our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, as I said in the beginning of worship, we do not focus necessarily on events in Jesus' life. It's not like Christmas or Easter where we focus on the Lord's birth or the Lord's resurrection, but rather on this Sunday, this Holy Trinity Sunday, we set aside to focus on a doctrine, a teaching of the church. We set this Sunday aside to remind ourselves who it is that we worship, who it is that is the God of Christianity. In my confirmation class, I often start, I think I started with you, I often start with, who is the God of Christianity? This is the question that we must ask. We come here to worship God, so who is the God of Christianity? And students are always very quick to say, Jesus, because Jesus is always the right answer, right? But not in this case. Jesus is not the God of Christianity, at least not by himself. The God of Christianity is the God that we begin worship in the name of, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The triune God is the God of Christianity. Jesus is certainly included in that. Jesus is certainly part of the Trinity of, of which we worship. And so Jesus can be the God of Christianity. Without Jesus, there is no Trinity. But to be totally correct, we must say that the Trinity is the God of Christianity. So I'd like to spend a little time this morning unpacking who that God is and who he is, most importantly, for us. We often talk about the three attributes of God. The attributes of God being his omnipotence, his omniscience, and his omnipresence. Those three omnis, meaning that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and certainly all-present in all times and places. He is the infinite, eternal trinity. And as we just confessed in the Athanasian Creed, he is not three infinites, but one infinite. Not three eternals, but one eternal. And he is almighty, all-powerful, omnipotent. But he is not three almighties, but one almighty. He is the triune God. Three in one one in three. He is the God who by his power made all things in creation. Our reading from Proverbs this morning recounts those wonderful acts of creation, those first acts that our Lord did to bring all things into being. Our reading from Proverbs talks about what this one triune God did to create. He is also the one God who has subjected all things under his feet. He is the God who has authority over all creation. All of these things that he has brought into being, he also has authority over. He is the God who was there before Abraham had his beginning. The eternal, omnipotent God is the same God who humbled himself to be born of a virgin, to become man, to take on human flesh. And therefore, by taking on human flesh, he also took on human weakness to die a humiliating death by crucifixion. But because he was God, and this is what David says in the psalm for today in our intro it, 
because he was God, he did not see corruption or decay. His rest in the tomb was not one of decomposing, but rather our Lord Jesus Christ is on the third day, the risen Lord. He is in fact the resurrection and the life. He is the God of life. The triune God is the God who gives life. Because he lives for eternity, so also that is his promise to all who follow him and believe in him. Whoever keeps his word, Jesus says, will not see death. They will not taste death. Where, O death, is thy sting, we sing. Where, O death, is thy victory. Yes, that is something every Christian can say because Jesus, the eternal Jesus, has given the gift of eternity to you as well. So what is it to keep his word? Jesus says, if you keep my word, you will not see death. Well, what does this mean? Or as we said in our creed today, all those who have done good will enter into eternal life. What is it to do good? This sounds very un-Lutheran. We thought we were saved by grace through faith, not by works. But to do good, to keep his word, is precisely that. To have faith in the grace of God. To believe his promises. This is what it means to keep his word and to do good so that we will not see death, so that we might have eternal life. It is to hold steadfast to the belief in the one true God, the triune God, and to have faith in his saving grace. Yes, Jesus is the almighty, eternal, omnipresent God. He is the one who is above all, who has subjected all things under his feet. He was there at creation. And this almighty, eternal, omnipresent God made himself nothing. He made himself present with us in our humanity. He made himself humbly present to be with us. Once again, the Proverbs reading shows God as the infinite creator of the universe, as one that no human mind can grasp. And yet the mysteries of God, including this mystery of the Trinity, the mystery of the triune God, is made known to us in Christ. In Jesus Christ, who dwells bodily and humbly with us, to save us from our sin. And this is why we can say with the psalmist in our intro it for today, in your presence there is fullness of joy. Yes, in the presence of the triune God, we have full joy, complete joy, abundant joy, because we have abundant life in him. We who keep his word will not see death. Jesus Christ did not seek his own glory, but rather he, he subjected himself to the glory of the Father. Not, thy, not my will, but thine be done, Jesus says. And it was the Father's glory that you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you should be saved. It was Jesus' Father's glory that he should be sacrificed for you. The Jews asked Jesus in our gospel reading today, Are you greater than Abraham? Who are you to tell us these things? Abraham died, and you say that we will never die? Are you greater than Abraham? Greater than the one who was willing to sacrifice his own son for his God? And Jesus says, yes indeed. For God the Father is the God 
who was willing to sacrifice his own son for you. Yes, Jesus is greater than Abraham. Because Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, but in the end did not. God was willing to sacrifice his son, Jesus, and he did just that for you. For you. There is no more beautiful word, more, more beautiful words in the church than the words for you. Our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is eternal, is omnipresent, is almighty for you. Everything our Lord does, our triune God does, is for you. The one who was there before Abraham had his beginning is here even now, present among us, speaking to us by his word. And by his word he has come that you may have life and have it abundantly. So that by keeping his word, by believing his word, we will not see death as Jesus promised. When we praise God for his omnipresence, his eternal nature, his power, his dominion, his authority, we also celebrate that he is all of these things for us. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us rejoice today. Let us rejoice in the doctrine of the triune God, of the Holy Trinity, who is in all things for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.